Yo, what's going on guys? It's King Touch Pro and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I thought I kind of want to make it a little bit uh, different of a video today because I kind of want to show you guys some different softwares that you guys might find interesting if you guys are trying to start up a YouTube channel or anything, you know, anything that has to do with creating a YouTube channel and you're a beginner at, uh, you know, let's say video editing or making thumbnails, you know, using Photoshop or maybe maybe another program or like a website that you're going to be using. And the video editing application that I'm going to be showing you guys today is called Movavi or Move AVI. Um, either of the two, whichever you guys want to pronounce it. Uh, it's actually a really cool uh, application. Link will be down in the description. However, this is the application that you're going to be uh, presented to once you open up the application. This is of course on a Mac and a Windows PC. So either of the two works. So when you go ahead and start up the application, you're going to have pretty much this going on, not the videos in here in the timeline, but just this right here. It makes it, you know, user friendly so you guys can go ahead and start editing right away. So right here on the first one at the top is the import. And this is where you're going to be importing all of your videos, your pictures, your music, uh, anything that has to do with media or any files like that. They actually support a lot of files which is quite impressive compared to a lot of video editing programs such as <clears throat> iMovie. All right, so the next one is record a video. Uh, this is where you guys can go ahead and record a video on your webcam or whatever is built in onto your Mac or Windows PC. Uh, even if you have a device connected to it, which is pretty good, you guys can go ahead and add a folder. So you guys can go ahead and import uh, folders if you wanted to. So you guys can do a screen recording such as ScreenFlow or QuickTime Player. I'm not going to get into detail with everything in this tutorial because that will take a long time. So right here, we also have sounds. So you guys can go ahead and import sound effects from the Audio Blocks library, which is pretty cool. They're all royalty free for you to use. Uh, so you don't have to worry about copyright issues or anything like that. Over here on the music tab, you're going to have music where you guys can import music as well. So it also categorizes it into a specific genre. Now the next tab right here is the filters. Now if you go to all, these are all the filters that they provide you. Honestly, from reviewing other video editing applications, these are actually pretty cool to use. And I'm not going to lie, these filters are pretty nice. And they kind of... They kind of make the video look a little bit different. Uh, I know that not even Final Cut Pro 10 can give you this feature here, but I know you can replicate it, but it's not going to look as good. So, you know, you guys have that ability to do it, but uh, this is all kind of pre made for you. So, these are pretty much all presets. So, you guys can just drag, you know, click and drag onto your video. So, you can do a pop art of nine titles. Um, you can do 16 and even 25 if you really wanted to, which is pretty cool. So let's say you use a, a filter that you use a lot, like let's say these two, and you heart them. If you go to the favorites, you can quickly find them without going and searching for them. If you're kind of getting like a, if you're outside in the sunlight and you want a lens flare, you guys can go ahead and make a fake one by clicking and dragging that on your video. So they have a whole bunch of stuff in the filters. Now in the transitions, these are pretty cool. They have really interesting transitions that I haven't even known about you have origami valley so if you want to add a transition in between clips drag that and then it will place it in between the clip so now we push play it's gonna look something like this and I know it's not the best uh, transition in the world but they do have some stuff here that you might find interesting of course you guys can go ahead and go to the transition properties and change the duration everything like that so if you want to remove any effects or transitions that you applied to the video click on the star it's going to be in green or whatever color it is and you're going to have a list of all of the effects you applied to that one clip and you can do remove or you have other options here as well I'm going to go ahead and click on remove to remove that as you can see. Now the text is pretty cool. We have titles of course if you want to add a fly, a fly in text that would be nice. So just drag that on top of your clip there. And everything is categorized to its own timeline uh, or little line there. So we have the text and then here we have the effects I believe and then the video and then the music will be in the bottom. So if you want to zoom in, in and out of your timeline there's this little scale, scale little option here. And over here on the right is your project settings where you can go ahead and change it if you want. So in the project settings, we have the resolution. You can do a letterbox if you want to frame that. Uh, we have the 
frame rates, the sample rate for music or audio. It's pretty nice there, and when you're ready, click on export. But we're not we're not to that point yet. But I just just a little heads up. So right here is we can go ahead and add text. Uh, the one I added was this one here, and so if you want to edit it, just go ahead and double click on it. And in here, I'm gonna go ahead and type in long boarding because that was a long boarding and by the way I messed up my shoulder so I don't know if you guys already know that but I did <laughs> kind of sucks and here's the duration maybe you only want it for three seconds we can do just that if you click on the text here we can change the font here we can change the color so it's pretty nice when you're ready click on apply so over here on the left is the call out so if you wanted to add a call out to I don't know, whatever it is, um, you guys have that ability to do so. All right, guys, so you have the pan and zoom, as you can see there. I'm not going to get into it too much. Here is the highlight and conceal. So if you wanted to blur someone's face, you can do just that. So maybe you wanted to blur this couple's face. You can do that. Maybe you want a square or a circle instead of a square. You can do that. Increase the size and of the actual blur, as you can see. And you click on Apply and then it will blur that. Now in the tools in the video here, if you go into, I believe the settings here, you're gonna be presented with video and audio. So we have the speed and fades and stuff like that here. In the color adjustments, this is where you can go ahead and do auto saturation, auto contrast, everything pretty much auto for the video in terms of color. If you can go to the manual adjustment, this is where you can manually adjust the brightness of the picture if you want to make it darker, make it brighter, crop and rotate. If you wanted to crop the video here, pan and zoom, chroma key. If you want to work with green screen and get rid of the green screen in the back, stabilization, you have the option to stabilize your video in case it's very shaky. You have that. You have the accuracy, shaking, um, change the parameters here, the radius, smoothing. We have the edge cropping and you can click on stabilize to stabilize the video. You can do an original or preview mode. So you have to actually stabilize it first. This will take some time. So keep that in mind. Probably go make some coffee and come back because it does take a little bit of time. That's pretty much it with this. Now over here we have a couple of more options. We have the tools. So this is where you can actually split clips. And this is if you want to go ahead and rotate the video if you wanted to. And maybe it's landscape or vertical. Please guys do not film ever in vertical mode if you're going to be putting it out on the web. So we have transition wizard. So this is where you can go ahead and change the transition style for all of the clips if you wanted to. So right here is you can go ahead and record a voiceover if you wanted to within this program. Choose the audio device, the, all, the audio quality and the volume and click start recording. That's pretty nice there. Same settings here as we did before and this is where you can go ahead and change the audio settings. You have equalizer. Now one thing that I actually found very interesting that not even Final Cut Pro 10 can do. But if you wanted to actually do one of those zoom in and zoom out or kind of screen pumping or music pumping effect, then this is an awesome, awesome thing you can do. So I have a Wu-Tang Cream. Uh, it's a very, very amazing song if you've never heard of it. Anyways, we're gonna go back to the settings here and then we have the beat detection. So this is really cool. I'm actually really excited to use this. So it says select an audio clip to detect its audio beats and show the beat markers on the timeline. So whenever there's a beat, it will actually show on the timeline itself and it'll add a marker so you know where the beat hits. Now that's really unique. So make sure you have your music or your audio selected. Click on detect beats. And it's going to go ahead and detect the audio beats. And then there you go. It detected pretty much all of the beats in that song, which is quite impressive. I'm not going to lie. Now, I wish Final Cut Pro 10 can do this. That would be amazing. And over here, we have the minute time between markers, two seconds. Everything's pretty much good here. And it will just detect it and add a marker for you. But when you click the check mark, they will all go away. Just keep that in mind. But honestly, that's pretty much it. Now, when you're ready to export, click on export. And here is where you have a couple of options to save. You can save it as a video, save only the audio, upload online to YouTube. I would not suggest doing this though. Just save it as a normal video. I would save it as a MP4 with MPEG4 codec, which is H.264. And uh, that's what I would go for. The project settings, I would keep everything the same. The estimated file size, it gives you. Over here we have quality. We can do good, high, and the highest. I would go with the highest. And you can always lower the video size later. 
You can save it too. When you're ready, just click on start and it's going to go ahead and export the video for you. So if you found this video helpful in any way, please leave a like. That'd be awesome, guys. Subscribe if you haven't. Turn on post notifications. Comment down what you guys want to see next. And I will catch you guys on my next video. Until then, peace out, take care, and enjoy your day.